So, CitizenCon wrapped up about a week ago, and I want to go over some of the more important aspects of what was revealed for everyone that didn't have time to watch the two-hour presentation. They showed quite a bit of information about their development pipeline, where they are now, as well as some additional applications and ideas being worked on. Of course, the biggest and most popular part of the presentation was what is now known as the Procedural Planets version 2.0 presentation. This was a great sneak peek into the type of the gameplay and technology that we'll be getting with the release of 3.0, which we'll be able to play. Even with the letdown of not getting to see any Squadron 42 single player action, um, this was still an incredible experience to watch. The look on Chris Roberts' face during the gameplay demo is the perfect representation of just how proud this team is of how far they've come. At Gamescom, we saw atmospheric entry of the ship coming down to the surface of the planet with a procedurally generated surface that we as players can actually land on, we can walk on, we have little rovers we can drive on it, it's all sorts of cool stuff. Everything you see in the distance is real and you can fly to the very horizon that you look at from any spot on the planet. With the new CitizenCon demo though, they added a bare bones weather system including a pretty amazing looking sandstorm, as well as foliage and more accurate textures and materials for planet topology, such as snow, sand, grass, water, everything in between. I mean, just take a look at the level of detail as the player traverses the surface of this planet in the URSA rover, URSA, I'm not even quite sure how to pronounce it, but it comes with a constellation, Achilla. Uh, when CIG said that we would see crisis levels of detail, I completely believe them now. And to make something clear, during the Q&A after CitizenCon, it was mentioned that we will be seeing some of the version 2.0 planet technology with the release of the 3.0 alpha build. That means that we'll get to play in this type of atmosphere, if not this planet directly. Um, chances are we'll even be given a little bit more, actually, as far as that tech is concerned. They said they're working on a better weather system for us to play with. I think a lot of people are underplaying just how incredible this technology actually is. Um, we have a freaking huge planet whose gravity is localized in a spherical nature, which exists within a solar system that takes up one single map. Like, that's how big a map is. It's a whole solar system. Somebody on Reddit did the math, and they made this picture, which really shows the size and scope of these planets. Just as a frame of reference, that line says 8 kilometers. The longest side of the Skyrim map is just over 5 kilometers long. So that should give you an idea of just how enormous these planets are. Of course, having planets of this size leads to a lot of empty space, and that makes me really hope that Star Citizen will implement at least a bare-bones base building system in the future. The potential of this is, it's massive. I mean, just, just imagine. There's player-created communities and the ability to essentially colonize a planet with their own miniature economic systems and more. Just imagine a player organization made up of merchants that specialize in their own trading of goods and they set up shops and essentially become a mall so you can visit those houses, buy their goods, and this community is just known for producing these goods or selling these things where you can buy them from. There's a whole player-made community that develops from this and it can flourish into its own localized economic ecosystem within the game's economy. Now, of course, if you have so many valuables to sell, uh, you're probably going to be a pretty big target for raids and other pirate activity. So this community would have to basically hire other players to act as a security force for them. And that creates its own little economic subsystem in there too. And a sort of checks and balances might have to spring from this, requiring some many governmental figures or players to develop within that to be able to make sure that there's no insider bounty hunting or trading going on. I mean, the potential is astronomical, and it would be a great shame if CIG did not take advantage of this. But uh, back to the demo, uh, we saw a lot of borrowed ideas in this demo. There were some very, very heavy influences in artistic design and asset styles that were reminiscent of Star Wars and, of course, the worms from Dune. I personally don't have a problem with this. I mean, how many Star Wars and Dune games have come out? And none of them have given us this level of immersion. So it's actually pretty awesome. Of course, this is just a scripted demo, so we'll definitely have more diverse sets when 3.0 arrives, and I'm really looking forward to that. Overall, the demo was pretty incredible, featuring sandstorms, sand people, sand worms, 
there was a crash javelin that had been retrofitted into a base. We got to see the Ursa rover along with the newly implemented shock and IK system, providing cushion for the landings and shocks for the rovers. I mean, it was pretty freaking exciting, guys. And there's even more to come. So, I mean, what else comes in 3.0, you might be asking? Well, during the presentation, they had a slideshow, and one of the slides gave us a little bit of input as to what those things are. 3.0 is said to include a new trading mechanic. This is likely to be very bare bones in the beginning, as we don't have anything to really trade other than money and weapons and other gear for ships and players alike. Materials and mining won't be implemented until 3.1, so it'll be interesting to see what they give us to trade. 3.0 will also bring with it cargo transporting. Again, what this cargo is remains unknown. One of the interesting things to come out lately was the faction names for the Star Marine update, which is also 2.6, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, the bad guys aren't just pirates, but they're actually labeled as slavers. There is a possibility of cargo containing bodies, as we also have mercenary and bounty hunter roles coming with 3.0. But the biggest part of 3.0 is, of course, the rollout of the Stanton system. This is said to have about 30 to 40 stations with which we can land on. It also brings the new reworked netcode, which should not only support a much needed frame rate improvement in the persistent universe that we can play, but also a higher play count as well. I'm really hoping for a 64 player limit at least. I know the goal is higher, but that's really difficult to do. But I'm betting it'll probably be closer to 32 if there's any increase made at all right away. Lastly, there will be new ships and a rover being made available with 3.0. Those are the Drake Dragonfly, the Drake Caterpillar, and the Constellation Aquila, which contains the Ursa Rover, which we'll also be able to play. But the big question is, when will 3.0 be released? CIG says by the end of this year. I have my doubts about that. 2.6 was slated to come out shortly after CitizenCon, and it looks like it's still a bit out, so I'm placing my bets on probably around February or March of 2017. Uh, that's probably when we'll get to see the rollout of 3.0 and above, especially since they have so much work remaining to do with Squadron 42. Speaking of Squadron 42, Chris Roberts had earlier explained that he wanted to show us an entire Squadron 42 mission during this year's CitizenCon presentations, but ultimately, they failed. And honestly, I'm okay with it. They put out a video on their YouTube channel explaining the crunch time and the development and struggle that they got into trying to get things in proper order to be able to show us a Squadron 42 mission. I know some people are upset with this decision, but the thing is that CIG needs to show a fully polished product without any game-breaking glitches. It needs to look pretty much done and ready to create the hype needed to really push Squadron 42 out. I'm going to guess that the vast majority of people out there want Star Citizen for its multiplayer persistent universe rather than its single player campaign, and I think that's a big driving force for Chris Roberts' level expectations when it comes to Squadron 42. People do want Squadron 42, but the hype for the multiplayer is so much greater, and he still has to maintain that kind of wow to his audience when he presents this. So, given that we don't have any Squadron 42 footage of any single mission yet, apart from the little snippets that we saw on their YouTube video, I think it's safe to say that Squadron 42 won't be coming out by the end of this year. Chris said that all chapters of the game and all gameplay features are a gray box or better stage. That's not all that great, to be honest. Uh, for those that don't know what that means, it basically means that all the geometry and the physical interactions and likely a good portion of the scripting is all completed at least a basic level. Materials, textures, lighting, AI tweaks, and all the smaller details such as clutter and sprites, they, all those still need to be implemented. Good news is that most of the stuff doesn't take very long to implement, and it's a, kind of a self-feeding cycle. As more of the assets are made, more time can be saved by reusing them in the future, so you don't have to make them again. Also, we need to remember that they are developing entire technologies and gameplay mechanics that will be used for the rest of Star Citizen as well. The better news is that CIG is currently taking one chapter of the Squadron 42 campaign to its final stages right now. They are flushing out any remaining bugs with scripting, animations, and rendering to bring us a full-fledged level, 
which I honestly expect to see by the end of this year. A big part of the excitement is that it means the Idris is pretty much done. That's right, the Idris that crews over 40 people and is able to hold multiple fighters. It's pretty much done and will be flying around inside the Star Citizen universe on its own. It's going to be a little while before 3.0 and Squadron 42, but let's not forget about what everyone should be the most excited about right now. 2.6 and Star Marine. Star Marine brings with it a whole revamped first-person shooter experience. There's going to be updated animations, updated movement and leaning mechanics, new weapons, new gadgets like grenades, pop-up barricades, along with a new first-person HUD featuring its own radar system. There's going to be a new health system, a whole new looting system to take equipment off of dead bodies. I mean, Star Marine itself will be just like Arena Commanders right now, but for first-person shooter battles. Now, the actual Star Marine portion will be more arcade-like. Uh, all of the Star Marine mechanics should be implemented into the Persistent Universe as well, but Star Marine itself will be much more of like a arena commander, but with first person, and that's it. No giant universe or anything. In fact, there will only be two maps that are playable. Uh, Station Damien, which is a smaller map supporting up to 4v4, and then there's Echo 11, which is a much larger map supporting up to 12v12. Now, along with that, there will be two different game modes. One is deathmatch and one is control, where you capture and hold certain points on the map. But it's not just Star Marine that we're getting. The Evocati are currently testing some of the new updates to the 2.6 flight model. This is lowering every ship's standard combat mode speed to about half of what it originally was. And they're doing this to slow down the battles and keep people from constantly flying past each other at such high rates. As things are right now with 2.5, ship battles are, in a way, they're, they're kind of twitchy and somewhat akin to a sloppy first-person shooter experience, really. By lowering the SCM speed and increasing the acceleration, they're hoping to lower the amount of slide that ships go through. They're also reworking the way that Afterburner works, and they're going to put a focus on promoting the use of it by redoing its fuel consumption as well. Even with all of that, they're still expanding on the Crusader map, possibly leading to more missions and more points of interest within the mini PU. Arena Commander itself will be getting some new tweaks, but I'm not really going to go into that at this time. 2.6 is also bringing with it some core technology changes. The biggest and most noticeable changes will be with the new menu interface, which in my opinion looks leaps and bounds better than the previous interface we were dealing with. Expanding on this interface change is the new ability to be able to load from game type to game type without having to go back into the lobby. So if you're sharpening your skills in Arena Commander and your buddy hops on and you guys want to play in the Crusader map in the mini PU, you no longer have to quit Arena Commander, go back to the main menu, and then load up the PU. You should be able to simply load up the PU from your current status inside Arena Commander. This should work for all game mode changes. The newly developed image stabilization system should be in place for 2.6 as well. This is a huge improvement to help alleviate any motion sickness problems and I believe it will also greatly help with the implementation of virtual reality, which hopefully will be getting worked on in the near future, but you know, priorities. Lastly, we have the new music logic system, which is a big deal to me. I've always been a huge music person, and having a dynamic system to help enhance the mood is a great positive change to me. The soundtrack for Star Citizen has been pretty stellar so far, and I'm happy to see them being active with enhancing the mood of whatever you're doing at any given time. So when should 2.6 release? Well, given the current state of the Evocati only testing the new flight model and not even any of the Star Marine features, I'm going to place my bets around probably anniversary sale for Star Citizen. At the very least, they should make an announcement for it then. And in case you guys don't know, that's the week of November 19th. So we'll see, but don't quote me on that. Well, that's a quick update regarding the CitizenCon demo where we saw some footage of what we expect to play with 3.0. We talked a little bit about Squadron 42, why it wasn't shown there, but what we should be getting out of it. And we also talked about what's coming up with 2.6, which should be the next update. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll be doing another video on what comes after 3.0, and that should be out soon as well. But I wanted to thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned something. I'll see you in the next one.